the pause part two from preparation for a christian life by soren kierkegaard published in eighteen fifty translated by lee m hollander in nineteen twenty three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org d are the consequences of christ's life more important than his life no by no means but rather the opposite for else christ were but a man there is really nothing remarkable in a man having lived there have certainly lived millions upon millions of men if the fact is remarkable there must have been something remarkable in a man's life in other words there is nothing remarkable in his having lived but his life was remarkable for this or that the remarkable thing may among other matters also be what he accomplished that is the consequences of his life but that god lived here on earth in human form that is infinitely remarkable no matter if his life had had no consequences at all it remains equally remarkable infinitely remarkable infinitely more remarkable than all possible consequences just try to introduce that which is remarkable as something secondary and you will straight away see the absurdity in doing so now if you please whatever remarkable is there in god's life having had remarkable consequences to speak in this fashion is merely twaddle no that god lived here on earth that is what is infinitely remarkable that which is remarkable in itself assuming that christ's life had had no consequences whatsoever if any one then undertook to say that therefore his life was not remarkable it would be blasphemy for it would be remarkable all the same and if a secondary remarkable characteristic had to be introduced it would consist in the remarkable fact that his life had no consequences but if one should say that christ's life was remarkable because of its consequences then this again were a blasphemy for it is his life which in itself is the remarkable thing there is nothing very remarkable in a man's having lived but it is infinitely remarkable that god has lived god alone can lay so much emphasis on himself that the fact of his having lived becomes infinitely more important than all the consequences which may flow therefrom and which then become a matter of history e a comparison between christ and a man who in his life endured the same treatment by his times as christ endured let us imagine a man one of the exalted spirits one who was wronged by his times but whom history later reinstated in his rights by proving by the consequences of his life who he was i do not deny by the way that all this business of proving from the consequences is a course well suited to a world which ever wishes to be deceived for he who was contemporary with him and did not understand who he was he really only imagines that he understands when he has got to know it by help of the consequences of the noble one's life still i do not wish to insist on this point for with regard to a man it certainly holds true that the consequences of his life are more important than the fact of his having lived let us imagine one of those exalted spirits he lives among his contemporaries without being understood his significance is not recognized he is misunderstood and then mocked persecuted and finally put to death like a common evildoer but the consequences of his life make it plain who he was history which keeps a record of those consequences reinstates him in his rightful position 
and now he is named in one century after another as the great and the noble spirit and the circumstances of his debasement are almost entirely forgotten it was blindness on the part of his contemporaries which prevented them from comprehending his true nature and wickedness which made them mock him and deride him and finally put him to death but be no more concerned about this for only after his death did he really become what he was through the consequences of his life which after all are by far more important than his life now is it not possible that the same holds true with regard to christ it was blindness and wickedness on the part of those times but be no more concerned about this history has now reinstated him from history we know now who jesus christ was and thus justice is done him ah wicked thoughtlessness which thus interprets sacred history like profane history which makes christ a man but can one then learn anything from history about jesus no nothing jesus christ is the object of faith one either believes in him or is offended by him but to know means precisely that such knowledge does not pertain to him history can therefore to be sure give one knowledge in abundance but knowledge annihilates jesus christ again ah the impious thoughtlessness for one to presume to say about christ's abasement let us be no more concerned about his abasement surely christ's abasement was not something which merely happened to him even if it was the sin of that generation to crucify him was surely not something that simply happened to him and perhaps would not have happened to him in better times christ himself wished to be abased and lowly his abasement that is his walking on earth in humble guise though being god is therefore a condition of his own making something he wished to be knotted together a dialectic knot which no one shall presume to untie and which no one will untie for that matter until he himself shall untie it when returning in his glory his case is therefore not the same as that of a man who through the injustice inflicted on him by his times was not allowed to be himself or to be valued at his worth while history revealed who he was for christ himself wished to be abased it is precisely this condition which he desired therefore let history not trouble itself to do him justice and let us not in an impious thoughtlessness presumptuously imagine that we as a matter of course know who he was for that no one knows and he who believes it must become contemporaneous with him in his abasement when god chooses to let himself be born in lowliness when he who holds all possibilities in his hand assumes the form of a humble servant when he fares about defenseless letting people do with him what they list he surely knows what he does and why he does it for it is at all events he who has power over men and not men who have power over him so let not history be so impertinent as to wish to reveal who he was lastly ah the blasphemy if one should presume to say that the persecution which christ suffered expresses something accidental if a man is persecuted by his generation it does not follow that he has the right to say that this would happen to him in every age in so far there is reason in what posterity says about letting bygones be bygones but it is different with christ it is not he who by letting himself be born and by appearing in palestine 
is being examined by history but it is he who examines his life is the examination not only of that generation but of mankind woe unto the generation that would presumptuously dare to say let bygones be bygones and forget what he suffered for history has now revealed who he was and has done justice by him if one assumes that history is really able to do this then the abasement of christ bears an accidental relation to him that is to say he thereby is made a man an extraordinary man to whom this happened through the wickedness of that generation a fate which he was far from wishing to suffer for he would gladly as is human have become a great man whereas christ voluntarily chose to be the lowly one and although it was his purpose to save the world wished also to give expression to what the truth suffered then and must suffer in every generation but if this is his strongest desire and if he will show himself in his glory only at his return and if he has not returned as yet and if no generation may be without repentance but on the contrary every generation must consider itself a partner in the guilt of that generation then woe to him who presumes to deprive him of his lowliness or to cause what he suffered to be forgotten and to clothe him in the fabled human glory of the historic consequences of his life which is neither here nor there f the misfortune of christendom but precisely this is the misfortune and has been the misfortune in christendom that christ is neither the one nor the other neither the one he was when living on earth nor he who will return in glory but rather one about whom we have learned to know something in an inadmissible way from history that he was somebody or other of great account in an inadmissible and unlawful way we have learned to know him whereas to believe in him is the only permissible mode of approach men have mutually confirmed one another in the opinion that the sum total of information about him is available if they but consider the result of his life and the following eighteen hundred years namely the consequences gradually as this became accepted as the truth all pith and strength was distilled out of christianity the paradox was relaxed one became a christian without noticing it without noticing in the least the possibility of being offended by him one took over christ's teachings turned them inside out and smoothed them down he himself guaranteeing them of course the man whose life had had such immense consequences in history all became plain as day very naturally since christianity in this fashion became heathendom there is in christendom an incessant twaddling on sundays about the glorious and invaluable truths of christianity its mild consolation but it is indeed evident that christ lived eighteen hundred years ago for the rock of offence and object of faith has become a most charming fairy story character a kind of a divine good old man people have not the remotest idea of what it means to be offended by him and still less what it means to worship the qualities for which christ is magnified are precisely those which would have most enraged one if one had been contemporaneous with him whereas now one feels altogether secure placing implicit confidence in the result and relying altogether on the verdict of history that he was the great man concludes therefore that it is correct to do so that is to say it is the correct and the noble and the exalted and the true thing 
if it is he who does it which is to say again that one does not in any deeper sense take the pains to understand what it is he does and that one tries even less to the best of one's ability and with the help of god to be like him in acting rightly and nobly and in an exalted manner and truthfully for not really fathoming it in any deeper sense one may in the exigency of a contemporaneous situation judge him in exactly the opposite way one is satisfied with admiring and extolling and is perhaps as was said of a translator who rendered his original word for word and therefore without making sense too conscientious one is perhaps also too cowardly and too weak to wish to understand his real meaning christendom has done away with christianity without being aware of it therefore if anything is to be done about it the attempt must be made to reintroduce christianity end of the pause part two by Soren Kierkegaard, from Preparation for a Christian Life, translated by Lee M. Hollander.